of you like myself who were science fiction fans in the 70s might recall a 1975 film entitled Dark Star, a tale of a futuristic spaceship commissioned to destroy unstable planets in the galaxy. It was an oddly wonderful film and just happened to be directed John Carpenter's first theatrical endeavor. And it is coincidentally not the film we shall screen tonight. Of course it's not. I never implied otherwise. Good evening and welcome to Creature Features, the delightful cherub to my left would be my mischievous young charge Tangella, and the sobering bloke with the penchant for derailing my monologues is my devoted, yet bellicose, butler, Mr. Livingston. And I, my hapless television viewers, am your host, Vincent Van Dahl. And yes, while we won't be showing the film Dark Star, the studio refused our request, the Mankey Prats, we do have the next best thing, namely the star of the film, Brian Norell a fabulous actor, writer, and cartoonist who will tell us about his storied career and no doubt other enticing tales. Oh, of course, the movie. Tonight we shall screen 1972's The Doomsday Machine, a colorful movie that involves space. Is that all you have to say about the film? Of course. Well, I haven't seen the bloody thing yet. I think I should like to be a bit surprised about it as much as our viewers might be. I did look at the box, however, only for the reason I feared we might have screened a Star Trek rerun and I would be forced to endure an hour of William Shatner's thespianic skills, or lack thereof. We are not a good horror host, are we, sir? Oh, do shut up, Livingston. And don't go away, loves, because it's going to be another night of space and fright here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do, machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Some moms travel miles for a present. But Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Come 
Commander Powell, this is Doolittle. Can you hear me? Man, man, what happened, man? Hey, what? Confirm! Power drive sequence attack, man! Roger retracted! Lock all defensive systems! Dark Star. They are not lost in space. They're loose. Welcome back to Creature Features. It's going to be a fun night tonight. You know why? We've got Brian Norell. You are like, you know, I saw that movie when I was a child. And I, I don't want to make you feel old because you were not a child when you made it. No. Course. But, it, you know, it was, it was during the glut of science fiction. And here you came out with this movie. And it was wonderful. Was it fun to make? At times. At other times when you can't breathe and uh, you're being blown and with kerosene mist or having a helmet that has no breathing involved. I was going to write a thing about it once called acting without oxygen. So the doing? parts where I could breathe were more fun than the parts where I couldn't. Right. Oxygen is a useful thing, especially in mm. space when you don't have In any. space. Very, very right, good. Right. To have. Well, I'm going to get all the information on that. And you also do other things. You do writing and you do cartoon work. I do. I do. And I imagine you're probably a stand-up comedian. I and, do that. And engineer to some degree. Uh, engineering haven't quite got there yet. All right. Well, you've got plenty of time. So mm -hmm. I, I haven't gotten there either. I am the most technically inept person in this entire household. It's nice. I don't have to fix anything. All right. We're going to watch The Doomsday Machine. This All is right. a good film, right? Oh. No? The, the high tech. I think, I think he's playing with me. I don't think it's that <laughs> good. I think he's just trying to be enthusiastic, and we appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the film, and when we come back, we're going to talk with Brian about everything. So everything. you guys stay with us, all right? Good.
Only Chairman Mao has the key to that law. All we can do is to warn the rest of the world. How much time is there? Less than 72 hours. is suspended several hundred miles below the control unit. We are certain the force of this detonation will rupture the faults of the Earth's surface and set up a chain reaction of explosions when the Earth's tension is broken. There are only 51 hours left. We better notify the President. Gentlemen, it is T minus 120, so we'll have to make this very brief. You all know Colonel Price, flight commander of our Project Astra. <laughs> Colonel, why this trip to Venus? I understand it's over 160 million miles away. It'll take you four months to get there, and you'll be gone for two years. Gentlemen, we've come a long way in space flight in the last 10 years. Since 1965, our fixed satellites, our space stations, our lunar landing and base established there several years ago, our probes of the outer solar system, all these efforts have helped prepare us for the payoff of phase one, putting man on Venus. Attention, countdown is resumed from T minus 120. Repeat, countdown is resumed from T minus 120. Gentlemen, any more questions? Yes. Why do astronauts take the long way to get to a planet? Instead of hopping straight across to it. Will Dr. Haynes contact Operator 5? Repeat, will Dr. Haynes contact Operator 5? Urgent. Operator, get me ground control, then base security. And Operator, keep this line open.
Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. You're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. Welcome back to the show. You know, it's a fun night. You know why? Because you're here, I'm here, but more importantly, Brian Norell is here. You know, I swear I've seen you in like a thousand films. Well, that could be a product of drug use. Oh. I'm not sure. Your drug use or mine? Well, both of ours. Well, I don't do drugs anymore. Oh. I don't think I actually ever did, but I, I have to say I did because, you know, the whole rock star thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, apparently you're not a rock star unless you do drugs. Well, I've been in a couple of films. I've been in a couple of TV series. I've been in a couple of everything. All right. I'm, everything get, except I engineering. I want the full list. We're, we're going to go through your entire resume tonight. Oh, dear. All right, but not yet. Right. But first, we've got to talk about this film. Okay. Doomsday Machine. You know, this whole thing with the Chinese intrigue. You know, they filmed this in the late 60s and released it in 72. Re China wasn't really much of a threat back then, were they? Uh, only inside scripts. In scripts. In scripts. They're right. very dangerous inside scripts. Right, right. Well, maybe now, I, I suppose, they could do all these terrible things. But back then, it was uh, the Russians, right? Yeah. The Ruskies. I like the Russians. They, you know, they make vodka. They do. I, I, I never heard of the Chinese making anything you yeah. really drink other than tea. Tea is good, though. I love tea. All right. So, Dark Star. Dark Star. How did you get this, this gig? 
Well, I wound up uh, at USC Film School, and uh, I lived with John Carpenter, who later... The John Carpenter. Well, who made Dark Star, who made right. Halloween, and everything else. But you lived with him. I lived with him and Dan O'Bannon, who wrote Alien. Right. And Terry Winkless, who wrote The Howling. Oh, my goodness. And so it was, it was a, a, pa a, a house full of horror. I would come home... It was uh, uh, an incubator of horror. I would come home, and I would hear screaming from Chuck Adair's bedroom, and I'd poke my head in... And John Carpenter's girlfriend would be in the bed. Chuck would be filming, and John would have a, a, a rubber bat on a fish pole over her, and she's screaming, and it's just like, oh, oh. You know, for a that, moment, I thought you were going to take us down a blue road. No, 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 story. but that was just the normal, you know, life at our house. And then when they all graduated, they went into horror, and I went into Sesame Street. But there are monsters. Actual Sesame Street. Yeah, I started writing for Sesame Street, and wound up animating for Sesame Street for years later, but, uh, you know, there were monsters there. Right. Grover, Cookie Monster, so... Uh, I suppose that is a bit horrible. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so, Dark Star, how long did it take you to film that film? Uh, a couple of... Two to three years. It was like every time two there was any money... Two years? Any time there was any money. Oh. Uh, do the next bit, do the next right. bit. So I had to keep my hair out to here and my beard out to here. You wouldn't believe that now, but it's true. You don't say. You know, I was wondering if, like, you had to like match the hair and everything between. Well, I just I just kept it that way, and my conservative bald father would go berserk. But that's just oh, no the way doubt. it is. No doubt. That's well, the way it is. If he could see you today, right? <laughs> I look more like him now. He he would recognize me now. Well, of course he do. Yeah, my father, he looked nothing like this at my age. I hope not. So I think he's he was lucky. Well, I was. I don't know. <laughs> All right, what do you say we get back to this film? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Back to the Doomsday Machine, 1972. You could see what the future looked like in those eyes. I'm Stay worried. With. I am as well. Stay with us. Attention, all SAC personnel. Report to duty stations immediately. All leaves are canceled. Base now operating under martial law. Accelerate launch. All minor system checkouts are canceled. Reset all timers from T minus 90 to T minus 50. Flight crew prepare to board at T minus 30. Those checkouts can't be bypassed. It's a red alert, Mason. But the ICBMs are flying. It's fairly simple. This base is a strategic target. They want us airborne. What do you say, Doc? Relax, Danny. We'll know soon enough. T minus 30. Colonel, we can't let the bypass go to checkouts. I've got to check with security. Excuse me, gentlemen. Are we under attack? All I know, gentlemen, is that we're in some kind of military crisis. It may or may not be the big rumble, but you know the routine. All bases scramble, and that includes our big bird out there. Colonel, what about those secondary checks? You can talk there and get together, see if you can live with your pet fixes as they are. It's go for anything short of a fuel leak. What's the use of launching if we're going to blow it? You know as well as I do, without a full checkout, anything can happen. And we're going to be out there two years. Anything can happen while we're standing here. situation red alert that is all we can say now russia has advised us that t minus 45 minutes general there's no time for that now. you are to replace three of your crew with three other officers women now i've heard everything colonel this is ridiculous it's absolutely insane gentlemen i don't understand you will colonel but there's no time to argue and what's this it's special sealed cargo it's to go on board I can't take extra weight, you know that. The 
weights have been calculated, Colonel. We three women weigh less than the men we're replacing. Oh, and uh, just who do you have in mind replacing? They're in your orders, Colonel. Dr. Brown, flight surgeon. That's me. Lieutenant Sharp, instrument tech and assistant navigator. And Major Williams, co-pilot and systems engineer. Yes, sir. T minus 44 minutes. Pardon me, sir. You or the Joint Chiefs or the President can order what you wish. But personally, I think you're out of your minds. Colonel Price, it's not in your province to judge. Isn't it? No. What about the emotional stability of a mixed crew in deep space for over two years? Colonel, we're quite stable. We have no special accommodations on that ship. There's no privacy at all. Nor are we asking for any special privileges, sir. Colonel, this is Dr. Marion Turner, flight surgeon, microbiologist. Where do we put on our suit, sir? There goes my stability. What's the story, General? What's going on? General, let us in on it. Let us in, check some shots. Let us in. Lieutenant Carlson, computer instrument tech and meteorologist. Hi. Major Bronsky, co-pilot, survival specialist. Bronsky, the Russian? First woman on the moon. That is right. Fortunately, I was at the International Space Conference in Washington when this emergency arose. I'm happy to say that my government has authorized me to join you. Emergency? You haven't said anything yet, Doc. What can you say, Colonel? It's a presidential order. There must be worse fates, Colonel. Gentlemen, I'd like to consult our project director, Dr. Haynes. I'm sure he... You don't have time, Colonel. Please get these women ready at once. T minus 43 minutes. Attention, Astra flight crew. Stand by for van pickup at T minus 30. I'm sorry, man. Three years of preparation. Well, at least my wife will appreciate these replacements. Good luck, sir. Ladies. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You know, there must be a practical side to having women. You mean like having your socks washed? Everything okay? A-okay. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ground control to Astra. Everything is A OK -okay from here. All systems are go, and you have a good climbing angle. Velocity is 3250 at T plus two minutes. Confirm time sync and prepare for booster cutoff. Astra to GC. A-OK. -okay. I'll go here. Time sync. T plus two minutes, 15 seconds. Cut off. T plus three. Read you loud and clear. Confirm BECO at T plus three. We don't like Dr. Perry's pulse here. So have it made. You can only take the second stage into Earth orbit. Astra to GC. Read you. 30 seconds to cut off. Colonel Price, this is Dr. Turner. Clear the air, Dr. Turner. How much time do we have before second stage cut in? Clear the air. Doctor, you will have several minutes at low G before the second booster takes us into Earth's orbit. The ship's gravity control is on. Ground to Astra. Dr. Turner has a point. Before second stage cut in... We are T plus two and 45 seconds. Sequence your checkouts. We've got two minutes before cut in. Give me a half G on the gravity neutralizer. You got it. Colonel, what about Dr. Perry? Yeah. 
Well, you'll have to chat. Dr. Perry must have pure oxygen. Now ask Arrow Medical for his reading. Control to aspirin. Your flight attitude is fair. Roll sequence is programming in, changing asthma to 75 degrees northeast. Do you read? Master to GC, Roger. Take sequence 2-1 as follows. Cabin temperature 90. Air pressure 5.5. Relative humidity 36 degrees. Sequence 2-5 next. Danny, read off. Uh, telemetry and tracking of green here. A little hash from shielding. Colonel, I warned you not to bypass those subsystem checks. Take it, Kurt. Auto guidance is sluggish. Manual override seems okay. Pitch axis is following computer control. Two degrees per second, over. Ground control to Astra. Dr. Turner, the Aeromed readings on Dr. Perry. Dr. Turner, you must let me run this ship. Pass to the ground. Come in. You have one minute before firing second stage. Where is your fire commit data? Repeat, where is your fire commit data? That's Perry's sequence. Major Brodsky, get into your seat. We fire in less than a minute. Major Brodsky. Capcom to Astra. Your heat exchanges and pressurization. Give status on sequencer units before program commit. Astra to Capcom. We are T plus four minutes and 10 seconds. What is your attitude for orbital entry? Are we hitting the slot? Capcom to Astra. We can't bring up your nose. Hit your overrides and fly by wire. You need four degrees vertical pitch. Hair styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. During a seance in the late 1800s, the early 1900s, Sarah Winchester would have roamed these wondrous halls. When people think of ghosts and the paranormal, uh, they tend to think of dark things, scary things. So many legends uh, that have been built around this place, you can only uh, imagine uh, the darkness that could be conjured up. An audience of 50 people will gather in the music room. They will experience some things real, some things not, and they will leave here not knowing which was which. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Sutherland from Power Rangers, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! Whoa.
Welcome back to the show. Tangella kicked our poor friend Brian out of the chair so we could do letters. It's kind of boring for our guest, right? To sit around and watch us read letters, so. Never. He's, he's found something better to do for a moment while we get business out of the way. So what do you got for me, Mr. Livingston? It's nicely decorated. Oh, it's envelope. a very nice card. It's got wolves on it. And this is, uh, who is this from? This is from Sue says, hi, Vincent Tangelica. Oh, that's a new one. I like that. Tangelica. And Livingston, I hope this letter finds you all well. I enjoy watching your show. You have some very interesting guests. We have an interesting one tonight as well, right? Quite. Quite. Who is, in, who is the person in charge of choosing the guests each day? Each day? Oh, my goodness. Imagine if we had to do this show every day. No, it's once a week, and that would be our director, Tom. He chooses the guests. Or he unchooses them, depending on who else chose them. I've been watching your show for two years now, each day from 2 to 4 p.m. Oh, she must watch it on North Bay TV, right? I believe so. Right, right. And Saturday evenings. You might say I'm your biggest fan. Hope you all stay on the air for many years to come. Your friend, Sue. Well, thank you, Sue. Those very kind notes in a very nice card with wolves. I like wolves. Not wolf men. I don't like wolf men. They're no fun. Our good friend, what? Ted. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. This is all from Ted. Yes. Ted, please. I mean, uh, so we like your letters, but they're so long. There's no time for us to read your letters. We'd, we'd love to read them. Do this. Send us a letter, one, 20 words or less, right? And we'll read it on the air. But this, I, you know, I can't go through all this. It's just we have to make room for everybody, right? Right? Right. Right. All right. Next. We've got, those are all from this year. This is all from this year. Yes. Oh my goodness. Ted, we need to find a hobby. All right, this one is from Mike in Pollock Pines, California. I know this place. There's you do? snow. Oh. Almost all the time. And there's pines. And I don't know why they're Pollock, but they're pines, right? Mm. Pine in for Pollock Pines. Hello, Creature Features. More creatures on Creature Features. Oh, he wants more monster films, is what he's saying. Right? Ah. Right? Yeah. Now, I agree. Now, we've had too many of these thriller-type films where... What in God's name are you doing? Oh, she's always making a mess, isn't she? All right. Uh, I love you guys and the fine work you do, but please, more creatures. I know you can't afford to show anything with the word creature in it. You're right. But perhaps you could show such cinematic legends as Navy versus the Night Monsters... Day of the Triffids, or my personal favorite, The Green Slime, which has one of the best sci-fi theme songs ever. I like where you're going with this, Mike. Tom, can we get any of these films? No. no. All right. Well, Tom says no, but he means no for now. Soon, maybe. You know, if we ever get picked up by a real network, like a big one, we could show some great movies, right? I mean, imagine me saying... See you next week when we have Harrison Ford and we're going to be showing Star Wars. Can you imagine that day? No, no I cannot. Yes, you can. You have to think positive. Ah. That's what you do, right? All right, keep up the good work. More creatures. Sincerely, Mike from Pollock. Thank you, Mike Pollock Pines. We've got one left. One more. Tangela, what in God's name are you doing? She's killing dead flowers. Well, and she's in mourning for some reason. What are, what are you mourning? I have no explanation for her. She's still understanding, though. All right, this one is from I Cannot Tell. There's no name. And it did not come in an envelope because it's email, right? There's no name. Oh, it's The Shadow. The Shadow. Knows. All right. All right, The Shadow. Hello, Shadow. He goes, hello, this is The Shadow. First of all, I love the show. Well, we love you too, Shadow. Second, I want to say hello to all the YouTube chatters. Evan Nattis, the noodle man. Third, I'd like to say hello to everyone who watches and supports the show. So you guys get this. I'm relaying information from the shadow to you. Let's support and keep this amazing broadcast going. I agree, don't you? We don't can discuss that, that Don't later. answer that. What a great job you all do bringing us this corky. Or should that be quirky? Quirky. Yeah, corky. Corky would be good for, we're in the wine country, right? So corky would 
be some oh, good ones apropos. Uh. Funny, creepy entertainment every Saturday night. One day I want to see Livingston in shorts and a Hawaiian shirt with flip-flops. I would like to see that as well. Never. Never. All right. Maybe you could show a monster from the deep type movie with beaches so it jives. That makes sense. It would be like a theme night, right? What would I wear? You don't want to see me in that outfit. Thanks again for your hard work and the amazing show. P.S. The Shadow knows what evil looks in men. Crime does not pay. Well, it pays for some people, I imagine, right? No? We'll never ask him about this. All right, that's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter, you would use this email address appearing in this region. Or if you'd like to send us 50 letters in the post, like our friend Ted, use this address here. All of it will get to Mr. Livingston, much to his chagrin, and he will pass it to me, much to my pleasure. Stay with us. We're going to get back to the film, and we'll be back with Brian soon. Good show, old chap. I'm on wire. That's it. 15 seconds to second stage cut in. Major Bronski, Danny, 15 seconds. sequencers on the gas generators. Committed. Everybody grab tight. Capcom 2 Astra, all lights green. Four, three, two, one, zero. Established, prepare for Venus launch at T plus 1100. Venus launch, T plus 1100. T plus 11. They're moving us ahead again. Combustion sequence in, purge valves green, gas generators full pressure. You're A OK. You know, Dr. Perry might have lost his life if you hadn't, uh, We're thinking of one life. The Colonel was thinking of all of us. Escape velocity reducing to ballistic course speed. Dropping to 18,000 miles per hour. Cabin pressure up to 0.9 atmospheres. Set control to AGCS. And secure final flight mode. And here we are. The old girl didn't pop a rivet. Venus, open your arms. They sure pushed us out of Earth all bit fast. I got a feeling there's something more than a war involved. You'll have plenty of time to ask them. Everybody get unplugged. Does she know why we're here? No. Are you going to tell her? I hope she never has to find out. Yes. Would you read 
read on the Doppler scope. It's been throwing out a good spectrum. Hmm. The shift is declining. Velocity, 17,500. I'd say we're 40,000 miles out. We'll put it in the ship's computer and see what we get, Doc. Right. Hey, let's get these wires off, huh? Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Turner. She's a doctor, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Can't wait to take inventory, huh, Kirk? I happen to think she knows more about this cruise shift than she's letting on. Danny, get me Astro Control. I want to talk to Dr. Haynes. Right. Hey, they've got us. Don't think about Russia and the U.S. The Chinese are at it again. That's news? Picking up a bomb of static must be the Van Allen belt. Or China, with her nuclear toys. What does that mean, Doc? Well, it's possible that new device they came up with. Well, that's why the pig rumble. Well, that's my guess. Their principle could start an uncontrolled chain reaction. That is, if they're mad enough to try it. Doc, you better get your checkup. Oh, I'm much better, thanks. Much better. You know, for a while there, I thought I'd never make it. If it weren't for you, I'd probably... Not me. Thank Major Bronski and Danny. I don't know they make them like that anymore. Come on, Kirk. They have to bury these probes so deeply. Less than a bee sting. You could not, Colonel Wright. I thought the proprieties were out. What's in? At least let us get familiar with the routine. True, Doctor. We do have a long time ahead of us. And with only three personnel modules on this ship, we should get quite familiar with the routine. What is this? Sophisticated American suffering from false modesty? In Russia, we are more mature. Shall we proceed, Doctor? When you're through in here, Doctor. Coming, Kurt? Oh. Nice, huh? Katie, this isn't a hayride. We're here for a serious purpose. What could be more serious than a hayride? I don't think she realizes how serious this is. What are you two talking about? There you go, Major. I can't get over it. Putting females together with a male animal in a cage like this. What are we supposed to do for the next two years? Breed? Uh, how about some checkouts while uh, communication's clear? You know something? Kurt could have a point here. What do you mean? Well, those Pentagon computers are pretty sharp. Sending us three women? Well, supposing China did destroy the world. There'd be nothing left for us to come back to. Oh, come on, Doc, you're space happy. You've been reading the pulps again. Doomsday. <laughs> Get him. Well, I mean, you guys aren't taking him seriously, are you? Those chopstick jockeys couldn't come off of the planet buster, could they? Look, it doesn't have to be the Chinese. Accidents could happen on any side. For the love of... Increase the gravity. Right. Ham sandwich? But mustard. This is the first time I've seen the Earth and the Moon together from space. Of course, the Russian probes have photographed most of the solar system. <laughs> of course. I speak the simple truth, Comrade Mason. So do I. And don't call me Comrade. First into space, first to set the record for manned orbital flight, first to... The question isn't what you did, but how. What do you mean? I saw one of your unannounced tries in Earth orbit. A ruptured hulk with a corpse for a passenger. How many more are there? Perhaps, Captain Mason, 
We are more dedicated to science. To science? Ha. Hey, Kurt, lay off, will you? I can take care of myself, Lieutenant. I'm sure you can, Major. But if you ever need the reserves, just whistle. I'll be on the lower deck if I'm needed. He's not really a fink. He just acts like one. A what? Never mind. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. As men tied to the earth, we dream of visiting the stars. men tied to the stars, we will dream. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Sci-Fi Saturday night here on Creature Features. Can you tell? Because we've got Brian Norell from Dark Star and a zillion other things. We're going to talk to him some more, but first we need to talk about this film because I suspect, and I've not seen this film yet, but he has, so he's going to hint if I'm right, that we've got like a like a Noah's Ark thing going on here with two men, two women, and all this pairing up. I think you're a little bit psychic. You're getting no, the drift psycho here already. Is, psycho is what they normally call me. But, you know, it's all right. I, I, I don't mind being called psycho because I'm actually quite clever and I can get away with murder. 
But uh, the film, you know, it's a lot better than I expected. Well, it, it's, I enjoy it because of its incredible production values. And that's my tongue in my cheek. I noticed that. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, they had a huge budget for colored lights. <laughs> They've got that whole Star Trek set they psychedelic. Did. And, you know, this is 1972. By that time, you know, it was a bit passe, right? Well, 1972, we were actually uh, filming right. from, from 71, 72, 73, all through those years. Dark when this Star. Came out. Dark and Star. you did not use any colorful lights on your set, right? Uh, we used a lot of hot lights. I mean, it was 16 millimeter blown up to 35, so it took a lot of foot candles and wearing a spacesuit, th what amounted to a spacesuit, right. was boiling hot. And I would only do one line at a time and Dan O'Bannon would rip the helmet off my head and tear my ears off and put cold compresses on my neck my so goodness. I wouldn't pass out. And then he jammed the thing back on and uh, it was a lot of fun. And your character had long hair and a big beard. Long hair, big beard, a whole lot, of, whole lot of hair. My goodness. So, making this film, I mean, it was made on a shoestring, I take it. Oh, b less than a shoestring. Less the than the a entire shoestring. budget for the film, including blow up to, from thir 16 to 35, and all the special effects work, the entire budget was $60,000. In 1972 money. Right, which is probably the budget of, big. of craft services on a day shoot today. Of course, feature. of course. But back then, that was like, Better than, like, maybe something else, right? I don't know. Well, $60,000 in 1972. You need to do the math on me. That's like 10 times as much, right? That was like $6 billion in 1972. You are taking drugs. No, I'm just not good at math <laughs> or science or finances. No, it, it, was, it was beyond a shoestring. I saw a list recently, how they do on the web, of the 10 movies you need to see. The only 10 movies you need to see to learn to make films and it included Kurosawa and you know Orson Welles and right. things you'd and it included Dark Star. Why? Because Because budget? it's like with ingenuity, look what you can do if you have no money. Uh, look what you can do. So um, right. Yadorowski saw it and pulled Dan O'Bannon to Paris in order to design uh, his version of Dune, the film that didn't get made. Oh. That was the greatest movie that never got made. If you right. get a chance to see the documentary, Yadorowski's Dune, you'll see the storyboards, and it was going to have Orson Welles in it. It was going to have Salvador I Dali in this. it. It would have we, been amazing. We were all looking forward to it, and yeah. then we ended up with David Lynch yeah. version, which wasn't too bad. But it was, yeah. Well, speaking of David Lynch and movies that should not have been made... <laughs> No, it was all right. I don't want to put David Lynch down. He's wonderful. But we got to get back to the doomsday machine. We do. Else? We've got to find out what's going to happen. The Chinese, this whole machine, I'm scared. That's right. I'm nervous. Right, right. All right. Off we go to doomsday machine, 1972. Stay here. Love your homemade water. We do travel first class. Where's that music coming from? Our later day Marconi seems to have broken through the static. Who? Oh, Danny. I think he's cute. If you like boys. See, I've been wondering, uh, you got a specialty? Uh-huh. Oh? Meteorology. Oh. Would you care to join me on a tour of the ship? See what makes it tick? I know what makes it tick. You do? Uh-huh. You're divorced? Colonel Price is separated from his wife at present? And Danny? Sweet. A merit badge for him. You do get around. You, uh, forgot Grandpa. Dr. Perry's age should protect me there. 
I wouldn't bank on it. Let's cut out the games, huh? You know what's ahead of us. We're all going to be cozy together for a nice long time. Now, why don't you relax and enjoy it? Forceful, aren't you? Do I uh, need force? I was talking about vibration. Oh. How are yours doing? What do they say? I'm not sure, but I uh, like them. They may like you. In time. startled me. I'm uh, finding a high DNA distortion rate due to uh, hard radiation. Probably the Van Allen belt or uh, solar flares. Speaking of flares, I uh, wonder what happened to the fireworks back home. Well, I just thank God that any destruction was averted. I could have told them they were crazy. The whole mess was unnecessary. I mean, bringing your women along. Some stargazer panicked and thought the world was going to end, didn't he? It was a joint recommendation of the National Security Committee and the Scientific Advisory Board. The president had to act before the Astra was launched. So in case the world did end, they figured a few people like you and me could do a rerun on Adam and Eve? Yes, something like that. Look, Colonel, we're only doing what we were ordered to do, and if it doesn't suit you, well, I'm very sorry. You know, without your glasses, you're a very pretty doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. I came to see about supper. Oh, it's the altitude. It works up the appetite. <clears throat> I'll help you, Katie. But, Doctor, Captain Mason has not, uh, got to me, as you say. Ah, there we are, folks, fresh off the space farm. But I must confess, your country is certainly first in the culinary art of space cooking. Ah, that smells delicious, Danny. Thank you. By the way, Major, remember those Russian ghost ships that Kurt mentioned. I'd like to ask you... I know of no ghost ships. Well, there was an early Venus probe. The, um, it's Vestia II, I believe. Yes, the Vestia II. That was lost in space. Well, its maneuvers were much too sophisticated for it to be unmanned. The Vestia II was a robot ship. There were no men aboard. I see. Then it was purely coincidental that a certain Igor Nikanov just happened to disappear just about that same time. Colonel Nikanov did not die in space. They would have told us. 
I knew him very well. He was my instructor in astronautical science and... Yes, he was also a very important party man. We do not mix politics with science. We interrupt. It takes a few seconds for transmission to return. What do you see, Kurt? Nothing unusual. Still there. What is it? My God. They did it. It's happened. Clear war. Everybody, what's, what's all the big surprise about? Two years from now, when we get back. My name's Mikey. Um, and I live in California. I'm a very big fan of your show. Um, I really like it. And... Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. We're the Dive Bar Mermaids at the NorCal Pirate Festival, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned! You know, Brian Norrell, actor, cartoonist, writer. I don't think the Chinese would just blow up the earth like that. You don't? How do no. you think they'd do it? Well, no, <laughs> I, I, the motivation is what I question. Mm. It's, they make quite a profit off the planet. You know, they, they make things. Almost everything's made in China, except this. This is like the only thing that was not made in China. But, but villains are made in Hollywood. Villains all made in Hollywood. That's a good point. No, I like that. All right, well, the movie's regressing or progressing towards regression. Who knows? But uh, it looks like there's going to be some hanky-panky on that spaceship. Now, you were telling me you know the daughter of the older gent. I do, Dr. Perry's daughter. Dr. Perry's daughter. Cece. She's named after her godfather, Cecil B. DeMille. Oh, my goodness. Because Dr. Perry... Is actually was actually Mark Antony in the Ten Commandments with Cecil B. DeMille. Ooh, he 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 did not end his career well. I take it. He, he, uh, yeah, I I wasn't going to bring that up. That happens sometimes. You know, you got to work, right? You do. Right. Well, speaking of work, what yeah. you do after Dark Star? 
Well, I was actually at the Comic-Con in San Diego as a guest um, and hooked up with the estate of underground cartoonist Vaughn Bodie, who just died. And I took over performing his cartoon work live, something called Bodie's Cartoon Concert. And I moved up to the Bay Area to do that. Right. And because I was up here, I didn't know anybody. And I wound up, uh, I hooked up with director John Cordy, started uh, writing and animating for Sesame Street. And then we hooked up the with- The Sesame Street. The Sesame Street. Well, uh, and then we hooked up with George Lucas, and I was supervising animator and a sequence director on an animated feature called Twice Upon a Time with Warner Brothers and you George Lucas and all that stuff. And then, so I was in animation for several years. I got out of that, went heavily into educational films, and then wound up uh, co-starring with my wife in a Bingo and Molly, a children's series for the Discovery Channel. That is wonderful. So let me get this right. You were in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And you did one film. Yep. And then you came up here, and now you've got all this work. Absolutely. Everything happened up here. L Lucasfilm. You don't I have to go to Hollywood to be like famous. And I've done really a little work at Pixar, and then at Wild Brain, I wrote a film called Hubert's Brain, which won the Annie Award, which is the Academy Awards of Animation. Um, so that was all Bay Area stuff. So you're, you're much more than a cartoonist. You're an animator as well. I was an animator and a screenwriter and a writer and an actor, and I, I'm still acting. My goodness. I'm I, acting right now, right in front you of you. You know, I, I'm, I'm ready to ask you for like a recipe for a souffle because I bet you're a master chef as well. No, I, I can't cook water. Jack of all trades, master of none, <laughs> better than a master of one. Is how the rest of that thing goes. Nobody knows that. I'm, I'm not sure. No, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Well, that's amazing. All right. We need to like get close to the end of this film. Well, you? particularly with the world blowing up, it's kind of concerning. I know. You know it's like I hate if, it when that happens. If we were watching the film yeah. from within the film, we would no longer be watching the film because we're dead. That's right. There's just seven people yeah. left and I they're think not about us. Things like this. I think about these things. All right, you stay with us. You stay with us because we're going to hit that movie right now. If we get back. If we get back. One thing we feared, nuclear chain reaction. Kathy? Yes, it is. Oh. 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 Not static. It's radiation. Get me the filters. Bring it in close. not all done. Earth fragments. Great broken masses of land hurtling toward us at meteoric speed. Earth fragments, that's right. Meteors. They'll have to change course if they get any closer. You and Kirk get the radiation shielding up. Right. I 
hope so. I... I want to live. I want to live! Come on, Kurt, get a hold of yourself. We all want to live. Danny. Danny, do you hear me? It's just been sitting there like that. It reminds me of my little brother years ago when he fell from the roof of the barn. He's going to be all right. Danny? Danny? Danny! What happened? He's all right. I'll be asked if you need me. I'm some astronaut. There's nothing to be ashamed of, Lieutenant. We are all very shaken up. Well, you seem very calm. My years of training. Say, so what made you become an astronaut? You ask because I'm a woman? Yeah. In my country, women follow the same professions as men. I excelled in science in the university. It was only natural that I should become a part of the space program. Were you interested in it? It never occurred to me to question. I followed the advice of my superiors. I was proud to be the only woman in a class with six men. Oh? Well, uh, don't you miss being a woman? I mean... I know what you mean. You know something, Danny? I like you. You do? Yes, Danny, I do. That's a lot better. That curtain cuts the radiation to about 5%. Flight crew, secure. Get into your seats. Meteors. Repeat, secure. Meteors. Meteors. Come on, Mason. You okay? Yes, sir. Come on, Danny. My suits. There's no time. Hold the cabin pressure at 0.9 atmospheres. Let's do it! What if we catch a hole in the hull? We've got emergency patches. Without suits, we'd never get a chance to use them. Here we go. Will you cut that damned alarm? It's driving me nuts! Degrees elevation fast. We're, we're not plotted. We'll get lost. 15 degrees. 15 degrees! Doc, how much reserve fuel can I use? We've got the whole return booster. We're not going home, so shoot the work, Skipper. Why don't you shut up, Mason? We're clear. Drop us back 15. Cut the engines. Cut the engines. Save the fuel. I will. When you level out. Oh. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever.
Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Hi, I'm Linda Blair. And if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television. Coming up. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. back on course again. All we have to do is slide down your orbit, four months of free fall, and we're home. Don, can I talk to you alone? Well, sure, Don. Kurt? Uh-uh. Rank has no privileges anymore. And no secrets. It's all right, Doc. Go ahead. All right. We can't afford four months. We've got to get there in less than two. Two? Impossible. We'd drain the fuel. We wouldn't have enough to make the Venus entry. The Earth's explosion has tripled the radiation out there, and it's non-directional. We just can't shield it out. Oh, it's mostly soft stuff, alphas and betas. The gamma concentration isn't critical. Yes, I know, but four months' exposure to it will mean just one thing. Sterilization. <laughs> <laughs> in hell do you find amusing? Procreation. The only thing our damn machines can't do. And we're gonna lose it. <laughs> we're lost, Doc. We can't land without fuel. A few could. By stripping the ship, dropping the booster shell. Oh, I know it sounds ridiculous to say that the weight of a few people could affect the safety of a 50-ton ship, but I've checked and rechecked it on the computer, and, and there's no other answer. How few? Yes, Georgiana. I just came in to open the ISPM switches. Danny and Katie are doing maintenance on the digital units. Yes, I asked him to check the Stellar B registers. We can't get a good fix on Sirius. I see. How long was she standing there? I don't know. Anything else you wanted? Mm-hmm. Don't. Don't your vibrations ever stop? You know it has to be sooner or later. Why don't we make it sooner? Ah! 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 
God's sake, cool it, Mason. What are you trying to do? See if I couldn't guess. Take your hands off her. It's too damn crowded in this sardine can to be playing tag. I said take your hands off her. Bring it up! Mason, I've had it with you! You straighten up or spend the next two months locked below. Come on forward. Dr. Perry has something to say to all of us. Do you see, the omnipresence of all this radiation leaves us no option. And we have to protect the three people who will survive. Three? Yes, three. So four of us will have to train. Fuel and weight factors leave us no other choice. It's beyond despairing. Why should you despair? In a fire, the mares are always saved, aren't they? Nothing ever changes in space or people. Okay, who decides what? We have everyone's Excel file. The computer will be programmed. Ha! Huh. Sex in the machine. Well, who does the programming? <laughs> Dr. Perry, any objections? are we? Less than a million miles. Only a few days now and we'll be entering into orbit around her. Only three of us. Only three. I hope you're one of them. Started this trip, I had a whole world to choose from. Now, now there's just me, huh? Just you and me. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt.
Hey, I'm Dave Hackett, pro skateboarder and artist from Encinitas, California, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Yeah. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, how do you think I would look with one of those bouffant hairdos? Like well, I just don't understand how they cram them into the motorcycle helmets. It's, it's a wonder of science, really. It is. Pat, you know, it's set in the future somewhat, right? So well, it, it, I hope so. Uh, because if that's the present, I'm getting nervous. No, it's like past future. What, what do they call that? Retroistic future? I think it's mm. backwards into a wormhole. It would be like a special technology that would make it shrink. Yes. And then when they remove the helmet... Poof. It becomes large. Very large. I'm sure the scientists behind the making of this film have it all figured out on paper. I could be wrong. Sometimes I am. All right, so fun film, still going, almost over. Let's talk about you, though. So you've done some very interesting things lately, he was telling me during the break, and you need to tell our friends at home some of the things you've worked on, like... Well, I'm proud of stopping a... Uh Bloodshed in uh, 13 Reasons Why, Season 2. It's a very popular show. It is, and a very serious show. Right, right. A very well done show. Uh, and I, um, I'm Mr. Barber, and I blew the whistle on Clay and Tyler and hopefully stopped a whole lot of bloodshed. So they were going to be like school shooters or something? Well, they're playing with serious weapons and uh, on my property. And you're Mr. Barber, or Mr. you Barber. are a barber? Mr. Barber is right. my name, right. yes, yes. So uh, I've been picking up whatever work comes up this way into the right. North Bay, and uh, right. um, I had fun on Venom, uh, watching the stunt drivers do unbelievable things. Venom. Venom, the Marvel movie. Oh. Yeah. And, and that was like on Netflix or something, right? Uh, no, that was a feature release. That the was Marvel. in the theater. Yeah, it was in the theaters, it. yes. You know, I'm so busy doing the show, I never get out. I was also an, eight, um, an NFL team owner on Ballers with Dwayne Johnson. I love Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. Especially the way he spells his name. It's like Dwayne. Dwayne. Instead of Dwayne. I was amazed that his stand-in looks just like him, and it's just as big. Turns out it's his cousin. It's his cousin? Mm hmm Well, that's a good gig. Yeah, it is. I bet he did not have to go to acting college like Dwayne. No, but he probably had to pump some iron. Yeah, right. I guess there is some work involved. Yeah. So you were an NFL team owner. Yes, briefly. It was How during, did it feel? Um, I got driven up to the Fairmont in a quarter million dollar Bentley. Oh, my goodness. That was very nice. A quarter million dollar Bentley. What model is a quarter million dollar Bentley? The cheap one. That's not the cheap one. I, <laughs> I have a cheaper one than that. It did not cost me a quarter million. It must be the, I don't know the model. I, I don't look at that end of the showroom because it's... it's well, I, I was only range. in the car for about three minutes, but, um, you know, you, you take what you can get. How fun. So you're becoming sort of like the everyman of television. Well, it's like every, every, every job. I mean, I've been an animator and a director and right. a writer and screenwriter and animation screenwriter. And, and, you know, so I'm trying to do everything, but I just haven't got to engineering yet. No, you know, you and me both. Yeah. We should, maybe we could take a course together. Let's the, do it. At the local college. Yeah. Right. We can go to university. It'd be fun. It All would right. be. Well, before we go to university, we've got to go back to this film. We've got to go back to Venus. We've got to get to Venus. Uh, we're, we're under pressure here. Well, hopefully, it's going to happen that way. Don't you dare tell me the spoiler, but I'm going to find out soon. So are you, as we get back to the mm. Doomsday Machine. Stay with us. I'm nervous. What's the answer? What? You're out of order, Captain. Pretty fancy programming, Doc. That information is for Colonel Price. Why? We're all in the same mess. You're gonna love this. I know, Katie. You must be bitterly disappointed. No, not at all. It's almost biblical. 
A patriarch, Adam. Fatherly, kindly. I think it's a fine choice. It's amazing. The wisdom of an unemotional machine. That man represents a million years of knowledge for tomorrow's generation. You already buy it, huh? I don't care what that damn computer says. There's only going to be one decision, and I've made it. You and me, baby. You and me. I've waited long enough for you. You're mine. <laughs> No one else is going to get their hands on you. Stay up, boy! Stay up, boy! You're crazy, Kurt. You know that you're crazy. You don't want me. for an impersonal decision, we must see the logic of it. Georgiana, I just don't know what to say. I'm happy for you and Katie. Besides, I'm the oldest. And that's it? Huh? The computer was programmed. It doesn't make errors. It's man-made, so it can make errors. We've become machine worshippers. Don't you see it? We're so used to flying on instruments, we don't know solid ground when we're standing on it. What are you trying to say? He's trying to say that you and Marion are very much in love. You're young and vital. Essential ingredients for an infant humanity. You're an animal! That's right, baby, an animal. We're all animals. No more rules. No more pretense. Survival! Please. Captain Mason, Katie, do you hear me? Five-year supply of food concentrates. They thought of everything, didn't they? Well, there's enough for this load anyway. Okay. Those are earth fragments. Entry should begin at once. Doc, we didn't reject the computer's decision. Why should you? Well, I consider it settled. You and Marion and Major Bronsky will carry on. Right, Danny? Right. I suppose I had stayed at home. At least this way I get a chance to wave goodbye. I've got to get my gear. It'll be all right. Because it has to be. Danny, hold it. Nobody leaves the ship. It's all of us or nobody. What? You heard me. But that suicide, the extra weight. We're going to chance it. But, Colonel. Hit the booster commit. That's an order. All right. Committed. Okay. In less than 10 minutes, the last stage will blast free and we'll begin deceleration. 
Everybody secure. Look, the boy. We never got my subsystem checkup. The circuit's been shorted. There's a misalignment in the booster connector. Let me get it, Skipper. Right, won't he? If the booster blasts free, he could use it as a raft. We're committed. We can't stop the sequence. You mean he can't get back to the ship? We'd be gone. Fasten your straps. enough mass to swing it. It's really jammed. Keep trying, Dan. Keep trying. Central Park on a warm summer's night. Have you ever been to Central Park? No, Danny, I've never been in Central Park. It was a beautiful place. It started at 59th Street. Hey, look! They're just meteoroids. No, no, over there! A beautiful floating miracle! Come on! Hair styling for the show was provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. During a seance in the late 1800s, the early 1900s, Sarah Winchester would have roamed these wondrous halls. When people think of ghosts and the paranormal, uh, they tend to think of dark things, scary things. So many legends uh, that have been built around this place, you can only uh, imagine uh, the darkness that could be conjured up. An audience of 50 people will gather in the music room. They will experience some things real, some things not, and they will leave here not knowing which was which. A 
single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. You are watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. She's got solar cells. That means we've got electricity. This is the Vectia too. I don't care if it's the Flying Dutchman. Let's go inside and repair the rig. Come on.
Where are you? Georgie, activate the view screen. I want to see where I'm going if I'm taking this baby in by hand. I'm activating the image stabilizer systems. We're set on wide scan. Should be able to get reception from Venus shortly. Hello, Astra. All our systems are go. I'm reading your signal, but I'm not getting any audio transmission. Astra, I know you can read us. In two seconds, we're going to boost our reception. Stand by to confirm you're holding us on beam for our entry. Do you read? Over. Astra, Astra, what's happened? Where are you? We're picking up no signals from you. No, it's okay. We've got their signal. Or do we? to communicate with no longer exists. Your sister craft no longer exists. The signal you are following is a warning. Had you been able to decipher its meaning, you would not have attempted to trespass on our world. Your world? Who are you? We are the collective mind of this world your craft now orbits. Be it enough for you to know that during the span of our evolution, our civilization has witnessed the birth and death of worlds and suns unfold. But enough. Your time is short. You may not enter our world. We have witnessed the self-destructive powers of the green planet you call Earth. We have no malice toward you. You have destroyed your place in the universe. Something very strange and very great awaits you beyond the rim of the universe. And now, last of man, your journey will begin. You know, I, 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 I don't know what happened at the end of that movie. It's, it's like they ran out of budget. Yeah. And it's like, all right, let's just end it here.
Might as well go home. You know, maybe maybe it was supposed to say next summer, part two, the sequel. You never know. Maybe they ran out of money maybe for that, too. Maybe they did. I don't know. Sorry we left you hanging. or they left you hanging. It was not our intention to leave our audience hanging like that. What did you think of the film, Tangela? You didn't like it? Why? Oh. She didn't like it because there was not enough blood. Oh, just coming out of the eyes there with the chamber. Yeah, that was she it. Likes, she likes the bloody films. Uh, uh, better luck next time. Why. Yeah. Mm. She's a bit of a ghoul. Well, she's a girl ghoul. She goes on ghouls night out. Is she your ghoul friend? No. Mm. No, she's she's more like an orphan. Oh. Right, right. She just she just lives here. I see. And causes trouble. She doesn't cause me any trouble, but she makes poor Livingston miserable. Oh dear, poor yeah. poor. He's chap. a nice man. He, he is. doesn't deserve it. But speaking of nice men, mm. what are you doing next, Mr. Nice Man? Well, I've got some books of my own coming out soon. I hope uh, cartoon books, books. Uh, with dogs. Uh, we love dogs. Love dogs. I have a, a, a canine poet I perform with, a puppet named Warren Peace, who writes canine poetry. Oh, that's wonderful. And I also have a book, uh, Good Breeding, Bad Spelling, where I've taken 52 breeds of dogs and, and uh, grammatically altered them. And I'm going to have an art show. The dogs or the, the words? Uh, the words and the dogs. Oh. Uh, and so you're a geneticist, of, of a sort, yes. A, Gra a graphic geneticist. A graphic geneticist. Yes. So oh. I'm going to have a showing at the uh, Honey Badger Cafe in Roner Park the end of May, That's and I'll put some honey, of that artwork up. Honey Badger Cafe in Roner Park, California. In California. Oh. Yes. So those of you in like in in like Cape Town. Sorry. It's it's a long commute, but you can make it. Right? It's worth it. Save it up. Is. You've got time. It's not till the end of May. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The end of May. Yeah. It's going to be springtime. Oh. Flowers. It'll be the end of these April showers, right? I'm ready for that. Well, you sure are busy for... Um, I try to keep busy. ...with such a long career. Okay. And I'm just getting started, really. Right, right. Now, life, life starts after 30 or 40 <laughs> or more. All right. How do we find out more? Well, you can go to briannarell.com or look me up, Brian Narell. B-R-I-A-N-N-A-R-E-L-L-E. Com. Dot com. Okay. Or right. look up my Facebook page, Brian Facebook Narell page. on Facebook. Is that like a personal Facebook page? It's it's everybody. It's, yeah, it's a so personal. So they have to friend you? Uh, I, I do that. Maybe it's just like a page. It's like a page. Like, you know, I'm learning Facebook. I, I have to learn these things. Well, yeah, I still, I, I never yeah. did. She's been showing me. You have to crank up your computer in the morning. It is. I have. I like. It's like a pump organ yes. computer, and I have to pedal very fast to get on Facebook. You know, things like Google, I don't have to pedal too fast on. Mm. I'm getting silly, aren't I? You are. All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming. You're a wonderful guest, and Spence Legend Day, and we're going to have you back when we get Dark Star the film. All we're right. going to show this film, Dark Star, his film. Right? We have to. We have to. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. I mean, after we've seen the helmets we've seen tonight, the, the space technology, we've got to bring it up a, a step to where we can see spacesuits made out of cupcake tins and, and dish drying racks. I think that's an idea for your next book. All right. Thank you, Brian. As far as you guys are concerned, we would love to see you back next week. We're going to have all kinds of famous people and wonderful films. I'm lying, right? Yeah. I have to, though. We want you back. Whether we have a good movie or not, a wonderful guest. We'll have a guest. I don't think it's going to be as wonderful as Brian, but it, it'll probably be a fun guest, right? Me? She's such a pessimist. All right. You have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you soon. Brian. Yeah. So, you know, there's all this talk about making a film, mm -hmm. right? I'm thinking if I were to drum up $60,000, yes. you and I could make a film like or better than Dark Star. Well, according to your math, we're going to need $6 billion.